Okay, hi guys. Um, alright, now normally you all know that I don't interfere with anybody's game and you are free as creator gods to have an experience however you wish. Uh, however, I've had a lot of questions about the religion thing. Specifically, I'm in the United States, so Christianity is the big thing. So, it seems like people are having an easier time working through things like uh, the education system is really kind of a mess and it's been used to encourage certain belief systems and y'all have gotten over that pretty easily. Um, the understanding that the money system has been used to control you, that hasn't really been a problem. Um, and, and people have worked through that pretty easily. The fact that uh, medicine and the pharmaceutical companies have kept you sick more than get you well. And that's been done for money and control. That makes sense to you. Um, the control of food, again, you seem to work through that pretty easily. But there seems to be a lot of people still very, very stuck on the religions that they have been raised with. And to be fair, these things are deep, deeply seated belief systems. Uh, they're a part of the society here, part of your families, uh, and they've been taught, and the belief systems are deeply, deeply ingrained. And a lot of people are having trouble getting, getting through this, how to let it go. Uh, there's a lot of fear. Well, what if she's wrong? Well, first of all, let me tell you that I do have a, you have to believe me for this, but I have died. So I have an advantage over a lot of people in that I have died and gone to the other side. So there isn't that question for me of what's on the other side, if there's something on the other side, and which story is right, which story is true of all the stories that are available on this planet right now, or even all of them that you've heard of from the past, which one is true? I know the answer to that. Not only do I know the answer, but the answer came back and it made sense. And it wasn't anything that I had ever been taught or ever heard of, but it totally makes sense in the big picture when I came back with it. So I do have that. Now, I'm going to break that hard and fast rule that I have, that I don't interfere with anybody's game. And this is only for people who are struggling with letting go of the religious aspect that they were raised with that they no longer wish to hold on to those belief systems, but they're struggling to let them go, okay? Now, I'm also going to ask you to do something that I don't normally do. Normally, what I do is I tell you to really go with your instincts. And your instincts, in this case, are correct, too, but your belief systems are so in, embedded that they, they're so fast and they've been taught to you so that you instinctually will counter your original instincts, and it happens very fast. So I'm going to ask you to use your just your logical brain for a little while, just for a little while. And I'm going to throw some things at you, and this is for Christians, okay? This is for Christians. Now, you can do the same thing with any other belief system, um, any of them. But in this case, I'm going to talk to Christians in particular. And what happens a lot of time with belief systems when it comes to religions, especially in this last round of the monotheistic religions, is they talk to you a lot. They, they give you preachers. They give you teachers. And although they all hold a, a book up as the book that you're supposed to lis listen to and follow as the Word of God, very seldom do the people that are involved in the belief systems read those books. If they did read those books for themselves, not books written about the book by somebody else telling you what the book says, but if you actually read the book itself, most people would not follow these uh, belief systems because the stories in them are really rather bizarre and what they talk about is bizarre. But the books are old, and they're hard to read, and they're in a language, and 
spoken in such a way that it's confusing to people and especially modern day people they don't have a lot of extra time and in this case we're talking about the Bible and the Bible is a big book and I'm talking Old and New Testament now most Christians that I know of they follow the New Testament but they will all say that the part of the Old Testament is still a part of the Bible and basically although there's a lot of talk about what the Old Testament is for uh, basically it comes down to that they do believe that the Old Testament is the Word of God and when I say Word of God don't say that flippantly it is the words of God that's what they say these are the words of God so at the very least the Old Testament is a book about Jehovah God the God that a lot of you have been taught to follow, to believe in, to um, pray to, to put your faith in. Okay? Now, the New Testament is more involved with the Jesus and the Jesuses. And I think people know a lot more of the New Testament than they do the Old Testament. However, I don't know that anybody is, that I've met in my life has even ever read even one full book of the New Testament, let alone... I think it's 66 books in the whole Old and New Testament. But I want you to come with me on a couple of things that I know that you are, um, that you're familiar with, or that you should be. And one of these I would like to draw your attention to, and I want you to just listen to me for a few minutes. I want you to try to keep the belief systems that you've been taught at bay. And I want you to listen to me as a civilized adult consciously thinking human being using your brain and I want you to listen to me for a few minutes um, let's talk about the story of Noah and most of you know about Noah there's been movies about Noah uh, shoot they're all over the place in uh, babies rooms right uh, you see Noah and the basic story is the earth was a bad place a god had enough and he said okay I'm gonna wipe it all out I'm gonna drown everybody out but then he found Noah and there's one good guy on the whole planet and he said okay well I'm gonna save Noah and his family and I'm gonna have him build this big boat and I'm not gonna have him go out and I'm gonna he's gonna collect all of the um, animals two by two a set of two one male and male, one female put them on the boat and it's going to rain for, what was it, 60 days and 60 nights? Something like that. And at the end of 60 days and 60 nights, everything on the planet will be dead. The uh, ark will land. And then there was the big rainbow thing, remember? They put the rainbow in the sky, and that was a promise to never do that again. To never kill everybody on the planet again. Okay. So you know the whole two-by-two two thing. You know the whole, uh, the earth was covered, and God flooded everybody out okay let's look at this story again a little bit differently okay number one this God that you and you I'm not gonna I'm gonna say that everybody agrees that that's the story that's in the Old Testament and everybody's gonna agree I assume that that is a legitimate story that is a Christian story I mean if it's not well it's all over the place in this country at least um, so let's look at this. That's an accepted biblical story about the God that you were taught to follow. Number one, you were caught that, taught that this God that you follow is omnipotent. He knows everything, does everything, and you may not understand it, but your job is to just have faith that whatever's going on is the way it should be, right? That's what you've been taught. Okay, well, let's look at this story a little bit closer. Number one... Uh, God created the planet and everybody on it, right? And uh, he screwed it up because that's what it sounds like. He saw, it sounds like, well, he did it wrong and he's got to start over because he did it wrong. Isn't that what it sounds like to you? He, he did it wrong? Okay, well, that's, that's kind of a, uh, let's put that in the questionable category of is this a God that you want to follow? That this God put together the earth and covered it with humans and he got them all wrong except for one okay 
Now let's go to the next point. Of all the people on the planet, there's one that was a good guy. Just one. Just one. He didn't say that Noah and his family were good people. It says in the Bible that Noah was a good guy. And therefore, he's going to save Noah and his family. So why did his family get a free pass? And nobody else. Does that seem fair to you? Does that seem logical to you in any way? I mean, why is that? Okay, now let's take it a step further. On this planet, this whole planet that is at play during this period of time, um, everybody else is going to die except for Noah and his family. Correct? Uh, what about the babies? What about the little kids? Now, according to every church in Christianity that I'm aware of, um, the babies and children are innocent. And so God wiped them out, didn't put them on an ark anywhere, didn't save them, even though they were completely innocent, weren't they? According to what you've been taught by your religion? Does that make sense? Okay. My point here is that sometimes, if you're struggling with these religious beliefs, then sometimes instead of looking and going back to what you have been taught, if you will look at it more objectively, that it'll be easier to let it go. To try to use some logic in your brain and say, okay, that makes sense. I understand why I have been indoctrinated into these belief systems and I understand why it's so strong in me, but I am an adult now and I can think this out for myself. So stop and look at some of these, of, of these stories and how they don't make sense. Uh, in the Old Testament, God was really, really big. I mean, he was a not-so-nice fella. Um, these guys ran all over the place and killed people after people after people. He didn't go and offer them his word, the word of God, and say, okay, will you follow us? Here is the word of God, and you've been led astray, and here we'll show you the right way. And then if they say no, screw off, then he went in and killed everybody. No, he went in and, and they killed everybody without giving them any kind of chance at all. Men, women, children, animals, everything, wiped them all out. And this happened over and over again. This is the God that you have been taught to follow. All right? Now, also, you've got, uh, and this, I could do this all day long, but let's give you a couple more. Let's give you the Jesus story. Uh, this is, Jesus was God's son, supposedly, that he sent down. And for some reason, this omnipotent God that has all the power, for some reason, had to have a blood sacrifice in order to be able to see humans and have anything to do with them. So in the Old Testament, they had animal sacrifice, and that blood covered up all the sins of the, of the humans until he sent his son, and his son had perfect blood, so he sacrificed. Human sacrificed him. You are following a religion that promotes human sacrifice, folks. And before that, you're, you are supr supporting a religion that supported animal sacrifice up to that point. This isn't a question. This is in the Bible. Uh, you, there are there are churches all over the place that have a cross with Jesus' sacrifice on it. That is a human sacrifice that was made to Jehovah God in order for God to be able to to deal and wash away the sins of everybody else. Now, does that sound like an almighty, all powerful God? Why would an almighty, all powerful God need that? And what a bizarre thing for him to need. Right? You need to stop and look at uh, the stories that are in this book a little slower, a little more carefully. Let's back it up to Adam and Eve. Okay, you, Adam and Eve's story, you know, the whole thing started with a man and then a rib was taken from the man and he, uh, God made a woman, put him in the Garden of Eden and said, okay, you can 
go anywhere you want, you can do anything you want in this in this garden, except you can't eat from this tree over here, which is the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat from that, you'll know the difference between right and wrong. That's what the story is. Okay? Well, why would you put that in there? Why, why would you even put that in the... Uh, uh, in the garden and wouldn't why wouldn't they know what the difference between good and wrong is anyway I mean it's, that's a bizarre thing to say but let's go past that and let's say the whole story played out and and Eve being the horrible person that she is took a bite of the apple and then gave it to Adam and they got found out and uh, oh and Satan was involved in that whole shebang and they got kicked out of the garden of good and evil and then they go out and they they uh, they somehow populate the planet. How did they populate the planet? I mean, did they have kids and then the kids had kids? I mean, isn't that against the Bible? Is for kids to mate and have kids? So how exactly did that happen? How did that play out? You see, if you're going to follow a book if you're going to follow a religion then you need to know what that religion says and that's for all people you don't go off somebody else's word and you can't take just a few of the stories and say okay well I'm a Christian then okay because what that does is it ties you energetically to that Bible and if you haven't read that Bible if you don't know what those stories are then what are you tying yourself to that puts you at, at, at risk vibrationally is what it does. And so I would encourage you to stop and look at, now in my opinion, my personal opinion, and I was raised by a Church of Christ preacher in a very hardline uh, Christian religion. And I believed it 100%. Absolutely believed every bit of it. But I did have these questions whenever I was 12 and 13. My first questions came with the story of Job. And the story of Job is another one of those, well, um, Jesus and, and Satan are, are, God and Satan are sitting and having a conversation. And, and, and Satan is saying, look at all these people that I've got that are bad people. And look how many of them there are. And God said, well, yeah, but I've got Job. And Satan said, yeah, but you won't let me touch him. And God said, okay, well, you can do this to him. And so they started this back and forth of, of, of Satan doing horrible things to Job. And um, to prove a point that if he let him go after him, that Job would give up on God. And he didn't. He never did. And at the end of it, basically, uh, Job had a family and he had kids and... God allowed Satan to wipe out all of these, this whole family, all these kids and everything. Well, then when God, when Job stayed, stayed with God after it was over, God had gave him everything back. He gave him all of his lands, all of his cattle, a whole bunch more kids. And I remember thinking at the time going, well, I was a kid. And I was going, so I can die? And that's not a big deal? And... You just replace me with two or three other kids, and that's okay. And at 12, that didn't seem right to me. <clears throat> that, that did not seem okay with me. But I was taught to read the Bible. I was taught to memorize the Bible. I've read the Bible many times, start to finish. I'd probably read the Bible start to finish five times by the time I was 18, easily five times and studied it a great deal. So I had a lot of questions um, as I grew up. But I don't think most people do as you take, and there's a difference. I don't care if you follow love. I don't care if you follow um, taking care of one another. Um, what most people would say, good moralistic attitudes. But that's not what Christianity is. That's not what it says. And there's a difference between just choosing certain. And I think really what would happen is everybody who follows a religion, whether it's 
Christian or Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist or name it, whatever it is, if people would get together and understand that most of them have not read the books that are behind that religious name, that they just believe in being good people, that everybody would take aside those names and come together as understanding that we all agree. We all agree that it's only very few people who actually read those books. And if you read a lot of those books, there are some really not so nice things in them. And I've read a lot of those books, a lot of those books. And I think people would be shocked at what's really in them. But you get to listening to preachers or you get to listening to teachers and they skip over all that other stuff. They don't answer those questions and they expect you to just kind of go with the flow and just accept it. Well, what happens vibrationally is you attach, you give your energy to that deity. Whatever deity it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one it is. You give your energy to that deity. You give your power away to that deity. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But if you're in the process of remembering that you are a creator God, that you've created all of this, that all of this is on you before, during, and after this life experience, then you've got to disconnect that energy from those deities. And it's not as hard as you think it is if you will divide this into two things. There's being a good person, and you can be a good person without being attached to a religion. I know that's not what the, you've been taught, but that's simply not true. You can be an absolutely wonderful person without being attached to any religion whatsoever. And if you go through the day meeting person after person, you really don't know whether or not those people are attached to a religion or not, if their energy is attached to a being or not. But you will know in your interaction with them whether you like them, whether you want to continue to interact with them, and it doesn't have anything to do with their religion. It has to do with the way they act as people. So what I would do is encourage you to look at the stories behind your religion. Think about the stories that are behind your religion. The questionable stories, and there's a lot more than just those. That's just a couple of them that I threw your way. A couple of them that I think you might know that make no sense. And that aren't, they aren't stories of a being that you probably, as a good person, want your energy attached to. Okay, so if you want to get away from those stories, then go deeper into your religion. Read the book. Read the book. Before you attach your name to a deity or a religion, read the book for yourself. Read the book for yourself. They're out there. Don't read somebody else's interpretation. Read your own. And think about it. In the first story that you hit that feels wrong in every which way but up, I mean... For me personally, if you've got any kind of God that had anything to do with creating humans, and then he turns around and says, you're not good enough, and you'll never be good enough for me, I have an issue with that right off the bat. But I know a lot more of this Bible. So what I'm trying to do is give you some ways of breaking free of those deep-seated religious belief systems that are deeply ingrained in a lot of you that are, you're really struggling with letting go of. Okay? Um, all I can do is look you square in the eye and promise you there is no one on the other side that is going to thump you on the head and tell you you weren't good enough when you were here. There is not anyone that's going to do that. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite is true. Anybody who came and was gutsy enough to spend time in this skin suit here on this planet, uh, people are, entities are in awe of the courage it took to do this. Um, it's a lot easier to stay on the other side and uh, be in God form. It's a lot easier. This is tricky. This is hard. Okay? All right, guys. I hope that helps you guys. Uh, if there's anything else I can do in this line, as you guys know, it's not my norm. To have this kind of conversation but I really want to give
people that are stuck in that arena a little bit of a helping hand. Now, if what I said just sets you off and pisses you off, then please stop listening to it. This isn't the video for you. If this brings you relief and you feel like you've got a way to go with this in order to find the path that you're looking for, the video's for you. Okay? If any other questions, be sure and ask me below. I love you.